All right, thank you so much. All right, good morning or good afternoon. <clears throat> this is Becky's voice talking. And so uh, depending on where you're located, the morning or the afternoon, it's our privilege, of course, as one of Bullhorn's uh, system integrator partners to be able to host this session for you today. It's all about, as uh, Sarah mentioned for us, working smarter and not harder with Bullhorn configurations. So as we get started, just one quick poll um, to get a feel for our audience of what items you're currently utilizing in Bullhorn. So let me go ahead and launch that. It's just a quick one. Multiple choice, one sec. All right. So um, as you can see, which of the following do you currently use? Uh, of those four, if a few of the names are um, something that's not familiar with you, that's all right, because we're going to teach you about them today and talk about them and how you might want to use them. <clears throat> so, But we'll give it about 30 seconds more, and then I will close it. <clears throat> All right, looks like a lot of you use custom objects on the call today, which is very cool. Uh, close behind that, give it about 10 more seconds. <laughs> All righty, yeah, so the high, definitely, let me go ahead and close it now. Um, is at custom, custom objects is the highest with a close uh, modifying, which is great as well, your workflow icon. So hopefully of the few we're gonna talk about today, um, those will be items that either you are utilizing or that are new to you. So with that, let's get right into it. We know most of this is gonna be a demo for us, but let me go into our slides real quick. Um, our topics for today are those, you may have guessed, <laughs> those four items. So field interactions, we're gonna show you some of our favorites that we've done for a variety of our clients uh, throughout the last few years of being a system integrator. And so we'll talk about candidates and a reference one specific and sources, showing you those examples. Um, job status, we like to use one on closed reason, as well as placement status on an end reason. And then uh, we'll go into custom objects, some candidates, uh, basically, we've done those for interviews and assessments. Those are the top two most popular. Um, and then Christine will take it from there. We're doing a, a varied uh, half and half kind of today. So she'll go over field mappings with you, uh, hints versus descriptions, which is a pretty common one, which most of you may be pretty familiar with, but it's really not utilized a lot. And we find that it's quite helpful, especially for new hires. So she'll get into some detail with that. And then lastly, on system settings. Again, something you may or may not be super familiar with, but modifying those workflow icons. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how the native ones fit that you see, whether you know they're called that or not, and then give you an example of one we use um, for candidates. Do they have an active placement? All right, so let me get right into Bullhorn here. All right, and you're going to see our demo account today. Again, realizing our uh, time is limited and our audience is varied, we know that we have perhaps recruiters on the line. Um, some of you are managers, so some who handle the config as it sits today. Um, and you know, you can be what's called an admin user, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have the entitlement uh, to be doing some of these items. So we'll talk about that a little bit as well. And then hopefully we have some owners on the phone as well. So. Our goal is for you to come away with some new ideas, get that creativity flowing, some conversations, additional conversations taking place within your organization. Often this change you know, with things starts from the end users where you're that subject matter expert who's thinking about, oh my gosh, can we do this um, you know, to help streamline and add something on your workflows for you and the team? You then you know, take that to a boss and ask, can this be done? Often that answer is definitely gonna be yes, but that's where we can come in. Or of course, Bullhorn, uh, professional services on a number of these, um, asking some questions from your account manager, et cetera. All right? All right, so as far as field interactions, it sounds like most everyone on the call knows what that is, but let's just make sure. Um, so some of you may ask what is what a field interaction even does and why would we want to use them? So our best step for it is a field interaction is Bullhorn giving us an opportunity to insert some code into their code, the Bullhorn code, to do things that we want the system to do, that it doesn't do out of the box. So that's a key thing. Um, you know, things that are native to Bullhorn, Bullhorn is a fantastic system and product, um, but not out of the box. All right, so now let's look at our examples. So um, the first one I'm going to show you is, let me pull up my candidate here, Cordy Wright. 
one we like to do and have done a variety of times. All of these may not be really applicable for every single person. We often talk about with config and what you're going to do in your system as we consult with you if we're doing an implementation or some follow-on work or something that you certainly want to config as little as possible, however, as much as you need. So I believe a few of our clients uh, were calling in today and they've heard us say that before. So we want you to have all you can, but you need to be a little just mindful of that and cognizant of, oh my gosh, we can over config things, right? Of like, I want every single thing possible. <laughs> and then you're, the recruiters are going, oh my gosh, we can't possibly you know, handle all of this. So you know, just bear that in mind. Uh, Rome wasn't built in a day, correct? Okay, so here's our references tab. Um, I've made my screen quite a bit bigger, so hopefully things are looking pretty good and you're all familiar with Bullhorn anyway. Um, so here's our edit tab, and this one's on status. So we've uh, just used these statuses in our demo, pending, uh, completed positive, completed negative, and declined. You'll see here where pending and declined, nothing happens at all to the screen, no field interaction there. However, when I choose completed positive or completed negative, it then exposes a few fields, um, again, making it just, you know, streamlined that I don't need to see those unless actually I'm choosing a specific status. And then you would fill in from there. So, okay, HQ, let's go our demo, completed by. Notice those came, became required as well. And then those would just be saved into the system and then, you know, live within there. So that's one we really like to use, completed references, um, you know, positive or negative. Another one would be from job list. So I'm going to pull up the CP catering. Happens to be a direct hire, but certainly you can set the field interaction on uh, any contract, contract to hire, or if you use the vernacular of temp or temp to hire. All right. So again, on status here. So status, these are just, um, for the most part, the Bullhorn native ones. We haven't adjusted these too much. I think we have placed instead of, um, we have filled instead of placed. But as I start clicking around, nothing's happening. I have it on hold. But as soon as I choose lost, notice it drops down another field interaction. And we like to use reason closed. Um, this is important, obviously, for reporting. You know, operationally, if you're like, oh my gosh, in sales, why are we losing these jobs? Um, so just putting closed in there. You can see also you have a ton of characters, um, but you know if you want it to be more streamlined and not have something you know that is again and again spelled incorrectly or something like that, you can of course make this a drop down, some sort of mini picker, which would be helpful also. Um, it doesn't have to be the free form you know text as we go here. All right. Upon save that field interaction then gets added. So job and closed reason is a good one as well, okay? Next, we're gonna show you termination completed reason for placement. So I'll just go into um, some sort of approved placement. Clicking on the edit tab, a couple required things here I didn't have filled out to begin with. And again, this is status also. Um, several of you that we've worked with don't actually use this um, native to bullhorn process where it's submitted then approved. It really depends on your organization. Submitted, you know, it's often it's just sitting in the holding tank, but someone has to come through and approve it. I know we've had a number of clients where it's um, like if they're direct hire recruiters, it's often that person who's pushing through invoicing that sees the final, you know, here's the, the perm fee, et cetera, and so they move it to approved. So either or submitted or approved, you'll see here on the field interaction, doesn't do anything. But when I choose completed and or terminated, it then opens up and exposes that field to say, hey, what's the end reason? And, you know, please put that in. Again, because of typos and things like that, if you have consistent, you know, they're always completed or terminated for these 5, 10, 15 reasons, um, this can be configured to where it is you know, some sort of drop down picker, um, or of course, just freeform how it is here. You'll notice this one, it is limited to 100 characters. And if you're a wordy person like me, you could run out of, uh, and it will then warn you and tell you, hey, sorry, you've reached the maximum character count. So 
I would hope an end reason isn't, you know, that big, uh, but <laughs> whatever the reason may be as far as being termed or completed. So let's just do a test here and save also. And then one of our very most favorite is, we'll go back to the candidate. All right, Cordy Bright. And we're gonna just go into the edit tab. And on this one, I'm actually gonna go into field mappings because I wanna make sure, again, whether you're the person who um, actually does all the configuration and has that entitlement on their admin user type perhaps, um, or you're someone who just, again, is gonna be that cheerleader and say, hey, we need to get some of these in our system. So anyone really who can do field interactions, anyone as long as you know, you know how to script it and write the code and that. Again, Bullhorn is here to help or us as well. If uh, you just, you know, your team doesn't have that position or role um, or perhaps the size of your organization, it's like, nope, we need somebody else to help us do those. So let me go here to menu. Um, those who do config know that it's under admin and field mappings. And then from here, I'm gonna show you the candidate one. It's important when you are creating field interactions that you make sure everything's you know, configured, all those fields that you need before you would actually uh, you know, overlay or put in that field interaction script. So in the, the case of source, you know, we have our sources here, Craigslist, Facebook, Indeed, et cetera. And then we configured also and made sure, okay, referred by, we want in there. You'll notice that if I scroll up here, it is not required, and we'll talk about that when I actually show you it from the front. So we configured referred by, we want that, referred by other, and then we did a custom text here um, for source details, which I'll show you also. So those need to be laid out if you're gonna create that obviously inside of the script. Where you get to the field interaction is, you know, you're scrolling down here, and then obviously it says add new interaction. All of you IT folks on the line are very familiar with this. And then you click in to edit, obviously, the pencil, the source details, and then here's the script that we've written for this. You'll make sure, too, that when you want it to happen, you know, like a trigger of, okay, when this happens, you know, on change, uh, then this will happen, and then making sure it's enabled, et cetera. And then you just, you know, copy and paste wherever you have your script and put it in here, okay? Going back to the front again, to then show that. So in the case of this one, the script that we wrote is um, a few different things. We want to know from an operation standpoint on that ROI, right, your return on investment, that, okay, other, I want to know who those details are. But I don't need to see it all the time. And, you know, you saw back in field maps, we configured three additional fields. Those would live there all the time. And, you know, time is money. Seconds uh, add up to minutes, minutes to hours. I've said that for years and years. And so for your recruiters and, you know, the folks who are in day in, day out, truly dealing with the candidates and pushing jobs and placements forward, interviewing candidates, et cetera, we don't necessarily want to see, you know, less is better in a lot of ways, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So for other though, let's say that, you know, you're getting it from the local chamber of commerce. And again, that's coming up all the time. You're going to give that back to whoever does your config and say, all right, we ha you can run reports, of course, on other and see that, hey, we've had a ton of these chamber of commerce. Really, maybe we need to add that into the list. Um, so others used for that and then those one-offs where it is like some, you know, random some somewhere that it came from, okay? If I choose uh, something else again, notice the field interaction goes away, again, exposing the field or not. And then the other one uh, that's written in our long script here is referral. So referred by and referred by other. Obviously, we can tell quickly here, referred by is someone in the system. Right, and where did that person come from? Uh, that happens to be just an internal person, but I could do test. Actually, let me go to change. Doesn't really matter, you guys understand. Here we go. So this would be, you know, another candidate, right? Referring that person, so Betty Thompson. Um, most everyone does referral bonuses of some sort. So certainly you wanna capture that, you know, referred by either someone within your system or someone outside of the system. Um, you know, your local, let's say CPA or someone that's you know, a friend of yours, et cetera. So that's why we have the two different fields. You'll also notice on this one that 
they're not required um, because clearly if you're choosing referral, we don't want both referred by and referred by other required because you're only going to fill out one or the other. All right. So those are a lot of our favorite field interactions. And again, Bullhorn can help you with those if you don't have someone on staff who you know, is able to write scripts. And really, basically anything can become a field interaction. We're working currently with a great client out of Minnesota. Uh, they went live a few months ago, and they wanted some gross margin calculators. Um, and so we built that off of field interactions as well. Uh, we know that Bullhorn, of course, has a GM calculator, but ours is just a little, the client wanted them in like three different spots for three different areas of entities. So, you know, a little more layered and custom. So, yeah, just get those creative juices flowing on um, for ideas that you have, and certainly we can help you with that or talk to your Bullhorn account manager, and um, they can send that off to professional services and work something up for you if you need to. All right? Okay, so that's field interaction. Now let's move to custom objects, which, again, I think was our highest on our poll. 48% uh, of you use custom objects. So the most common are, and this is probably for those of you on the phone, um, something you have done. And so um, the most common one we've worked with clients on has been creating interviews. Um, a few of our clients, we've done multiple interviews. Again, we don't want to get crazy, you know, adding all these tabs in and like, oh my gosh, who's on first? What's even happening? Which one am I doing? But the few we've done have been all about, they work in, let's say, the professional sector, so more... Um, you know, it's the direct hires, it's high-end marketing, it's maybe boutique type firms where those professional interview questions are going to be quite different than the commercial side, which lends itself to more, you know, um, the manufacturing and, you know, what equipment might you have or how much can you lift and, you know, those, those types of things. So custom objects are something that uh, you out in the regular field of Bullhorn, so as end users, whether, you, whether you've been on the system, you know, a few short weeks or months or for some years now, that you will have to have Bullhorn or us create these for you, okay? So custom objects. All right, so the one here for our example is just an interview tab and um, a few required items, right? We always wanna know who did that who created it, and then what date they completed it. And we won't go through all of these, but just a, key, a few key things with custom objects. So again, um, here this whole limit item of you know, zero to 100. So with custom objects, as you have an idea and creativity thinking, okay, we wanna create you know, an interview tab. Um, what are the questions that we currently use? And the reason you want this in Bullhorn, you know, it's kind of obvious, right? Like back in the day, since I've been in staffing 20 plus years, literally, you know, we didn't even put them in Word docs. It was like, here's a piece of paper. These are copied off and write your answers here. So that can A, get lost on my desk, accidentally thrown away and never given to the rest of my team. So having these in Bullhorn is just so powerful because you can have multiple interviews. So a lot of direct hire firms say, hey, they have to inter interview with one recruiter, and then maybe the next level of, you know, that manager has to interview also for some, you know, 150,000 direct hire placement. And so you can have multiple interviews, and they're all just right here for everyone to look at. So with this limit, though, you need to be somewhat creative to realize there's only, I think, five, and don't need to get into the huge minutia part now, right now, but only five or so text blocks that are much bigger. So, you know, what are the questions you're going to use? Tell me the best part about your last position. You know, it's really a template for your team to follow where they're on the phone or the person's come in and they're typing it right into Bullhorn. Super streamlined, super efficient. You know, if you're running late, what's your plan to get to work? All of these we can tell are at, you know, 100 characters. Want to make sure you realize also with custom objects as you think about these things and for your team that um, you can um, configure them really similar to field mapping, basically the same. So notice this one's a radio button. So if it entails that the questions you're asking is just, oh, yeah, which work environment do you prefer, individual or team? If you don't have to expand on that, um, you can use radio buttons, you can use various pickers. Um, this one we did, you know, some sort of mini picker drop down. So performance, regarding your overall performance, how will your most recent employer rate yours? So stellar, good, fair, poor. So of course we're gonna say stellar. Um, so anyway, and then you would just save that. 
Um, I like to keep all of my things vertical, but certainly horizontal, depending on how your eyes and mind work. Um, and then, like I mentioned, you can add additional interviews as well. Okay? All righty. Um, another one that we've done occasionally is if by chance you don't have and aren't working with a marketplace partner that has an integration for your assessments, so the evaluations you give, we've configured custom objects that way. Um, but the most common has definitely been the interview tab. And then also this is super helpful because you can, um, you know, if you have Canvas for sure, which is an awesome Bullhorn product that probably several of you on the phone have it. So you can have, you know, reports come up that say, hey, um, show us who's doing what. You also can search on this to see how many interviews were done and that sort of thing, depending on if you use goals and quotas, obviously you're putting in um, interviews that way. But um, it's just a great way, again, that you can map out and know, okay, what type of activity is happening, and it's just really at your fingertips. Okay? All right. Christine, I think we're ready to have you take over and go on with our next couple topics. So thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Christine, and I will be showing you a few more customizations within Bullhorn that are simplistic and you can actually do on your own. Um, documenting data efficiently in Bullhorn puts your organization in the best position to have the most accurate data for analyzing or reporting purposes. One way to ensure that uh, the workflow efficiency of new hires and your team members are capturing important data are hints and descriptions in Bullhorn. These are customizations we encourage Bullhorn users to utilize as reminders or prompts for inputting data in a record. So I'm going to open up a blank candidate record. And scrolling down to the source field, we have a question that states, how did you find out about our services? So upon making a selection, you can see that the question goes away. And if I scroll down to my emergency contact and also the emergency relationship field, there are two questions here, and each of them state, who is the best person for us to contact in case of an emergency? And also, what is your relationship to the emergency contact you've provided? So when I am putting in that information, you can see the question again disappears. All right, so those are hints that live within the field um, and those are considered hints and they live within the field where you've applied them and they will disappear when data is entered into that field. So if you remove the data, the hint will reappear. Scrolling up to our email field, we have a question here that states, is this your current email address? As you can see, when I put that information in there, the question still lives right below the actual field. So this is considered a description in Bullhorn, and descriptions live below the field permanently unless you remove them in field mapping. Um, this particular example is pretty cool because we all know communication with our candidates does happen over the phone, phone conversations, phone calls, text messages, but um, our email communication with our candidates are very important as well. So that particular question right there reminds your recruiters or team members that, hey, are we confirming that our candidate um, their email address we have saved. Is this the most current and accurate email address that we have? Okay. All right, something to consider. Um, of course, we all know some fields in a candidate record will auto-populate when you parse in a resume or if your organization is using an outside integration for onboarding. Of course, you wouldn't need to add any hints or descriptions to these specific fields. For example, we have the title and the current company field um, in the candidate record. When we parse in a resume, if the candidate is currently on an assignment, or I'm sorry, currently working um, and have a current job title, that will be parsed into these two fields. 
So how do you remove and add hints and descriptions in Bullhorn? The way to do so, again, as Becky mentioned, um, if you have the admin entitlements, you will be able to make these changes in field map. All right. And because we are making this change in the candidate entity, we want to make sure that we are dropping down the right um, candidate entity. And I'll scroll down to the source that Becky showed previously. And in our first example, we had the question, how did you find out about our services? Now, if you didn't want that to live as a hint within that field, you can just copy and paste your question or statement into the description box. And again, that would live right below the field. And always be sure to save your changes in Bullhorn. All right, again, hints and descriptions are beneficial as they are prompts for you and your team to capture consistent data within a specific field, especially for your new team members. Um, other places we recommend using hints and descriptions in Bullhorn are jobs, leads, or opportunities. So the next item I want to talk about is modifying your workflow icons. So I'm going to open up our candidate, Cordy Bright. Workflow icons live in the overview of the record, and they are the boxes right below the tabs. Um, keep in mind, placements do not have workflow icons. So typically, when an action has been completed, the icon will light up, and it, it can even include the total number of times a record has met the criteria for that particular workflow. So pre-screen, for example, is a Bullhorn native workflow. Um, in order to complete this workflow, you have to complete the action for this item. So when I click into the pre-screen workflow, the note template appears and the note action is already pre-selected and it's pre-selected with the action of pre-screen. So all I would have to do is type in my notes. Okay. Once I complete that note and save, the icon is now highlighted, indicating that we've completed that workflow. We've added an additional icon to our demo account. Um, and you can see at the end here, it's the active uh, it's the active placement workflow icon. So this lets us know that the candidate is currently on an assignment when it is highlighted. Uh, the trigger for this workflow is when today's date falls between the start date and the end date on the placement. So I'll go ahead and show you that inside of the placement. And Christine, as you're clicking through that, can I just add, this is awesome. Years ago, I ran a branch, of course, worked in a branch, ran a branch um, before I was a system integrator. And um, that's super helpful, as we all know, operationally. Like if you're, you know, um, certainly you're running your searches on candidate lists, et cetera, and looking at candidates. But if I'm just like going through and looking at someone, looking at someone, it's just at a glance, so awesome operationally to have that to be like, ooh, they're active. Yep, can't look at them right now. Or to go, that can't be right. And maybe a placement needs to be closed out, right? <laughs> we're not uh, maintaining everything at 100 percent right all right so the start date of the placement says um, April 4th which was a few days back and then the scheduled end date says tomorrow so that's how Bullhorn knows that this placement is currently active because their placement is current is not scheduled to end until tomorrow but watch what happens when I move the end date to a few days earlier if I save this and go back to my candidate record, the icon is no longer highlighted because we changed the end date to say this assignment actually ended a few days prior to today. Okay, so how would you modify workflow icons? Um, again, if you have the entitlements as an admin, you would be able to go into your admin folder and open up your system settings. In the search box, you'll want to search for workflow. 
And because we're making these changes in the candidate entity, you can drop out, drop down that um, option for the candidate workflow. And in the value box, this is our current workflow icons within our candidate entity. So we already have the active placement in here, but down below you can see there are additional workflow icons that you can add along with a description of what the trigger would be for that particular um, workflow. And the one we used is the active placement. So if you wanted to add that one, you would highlight everything, um, including the brackets. You would copy that and paste it into your field, and then always be sure to put uh, commas in between the values. Lastly, save your changes. All right, so we have come to the end of our webinar. I'm going to pass it back to Sarah from Bullhorn now um, to see what questions we have. Awesome, thank you. So we did get a couple questions in. Um, our first question is, if we do the job field interaction you showed, can we add reason close to the overview tab? Yes, um, thank you for your question, absolutely. And we recommend you do so that it's easily visible to everyone at a glance. So let me quickly show you where you would be able to do that. Um, again, as an admin, you would go up to your menu admin folder and then select view layout. Um, because we have the reason closed in the job, I want to make sure that is the entity I am selecting. So in this example, I'll show you in job three, and then scroll down, I want to stay in the profile record, scroll down to the section that says profile right side bar. That's basically the details card within your, um, your overview tab. So I'm going to locate reason closed, switch that over, and then also I want to make sure I'm moving it right below the status, which I think I went too far. There we go. And then save my changes. I'm going to wait for that to save so I can show you. In the job list, if I open up my job, in the overview tab, the details card, we have the status, and if we had a reason closed, that would live right here. So you can see that quickly at a glance. Okay. Excellent. Um, our next question is, I believe you said the interview tab is searchable. How do we do that? Yeah, absolutely. So in order to search um, for the information in your interview tab, because that lives in the candidate record, you would then open up the candidate list view, because that's where you'll want to run your search. And in the search box, um, I already have some entered, so let me clear those out. And the additional criteria, I want to add a field to the search and type in interview. Those are the fields that I am looking for. Um, I also, maybe I want to search on um, interviews that were completed within a date range. I can select that field. And then also, let's say I want to search on a specific user that completed those interviews. So I would then select completed by. And the date range, let's do seven days um, completed by, I want to see all interviews completed by Marianne, Mariana Tester in search. All right, so the results are telling me that uh, Mariana Tester has completed two interview, interviews within that uh, seven day period for both of these candidates. And of course, you can click into each one to look at the details of the actual interview. Awesome. Our next question is, what other workflow icons would you recommend? Yep. Um, so because we liked the active placement one so much, um, we actually do recommend that you also add that one to your job list. So instead of showing you, I've already showed you how to do it in the candidate list. Um, but I'll go ahead and just open up my job billing specialist here. And so you can see how that looks. 
So currently in my job, I have five placements um, ever in this particular job. But the active placement here is telling me that I have one placement that is currently active for all of the placements that have ever been made on this particular job. So that's really helpful um, if you have you know, a job that you place maybe 10 to 15 people on and you want to see how many people are currently active. Excellent. And our next question is, is there a limit to the number of hints and descriptions we're allowed to use? Um, yes, thank you for the question. So no, there isn't a limit to the number of hints and descriptions that you're allowed to use. Um, however, we do recommend that you be mindful of um, when you are using hints and descriptions because you'll have fields, again, that auto-populate into your candidate records, for example, from parsing. And then if you are using hints and descriptions within jobs, um, do be mindful, jobs and placements to be exact, um, be mindful of the correlated fields that will automatically populate from your job to your actual placement. Great, thank you. And our next question is, regarding the interview tab, you showed text answers and I believe you said one can have other configuration options such as drop downs, radio buttons, etc. Can you go back and show that piece? Certainly, let me go back to my candidate record. Cordy Bright. All right, so in the interview tab, just to clarify, I just add an interview. So when we talk about um, the actual, um, the fields within your custom object, so for example, um, the completed by is a picker field. Um, date completed is a date field, right? Um, and then this first field is for position highlights. There is a minimum of 100 characters. So the custom objects can be configured to where if you wanted to have multiple radio buttons, you can have those instead of having a free typing field. So that would be examples of configuring, configuring your custom objects to um, the specific fields and what type of fields you're looking for in each question or for each question. Right, basically the same, right, Christina? Yeah. As yeah, radio buttons, uh, pickers of some sort, um, really anything, dates, numbers, text, of course. Awesome. And our next question, for field interactions, if we want to hide and expose candidate sources different than referral and other, is that possible? Yes, um, absolutely. You would just have to write that into your script. And let me just pull up my candidate record to give a better idea of what you can do. So going back to the source field, Okay, let's say, for example, currently the way we have um, our demo account set up and how we set up most of our clients, um, again, if you click on the referral source, these two fields will drop down, uh, referred by and referred by other. Now, let's just say, for example, um, you wanted to add additional fields for website. Maybe you wanted to clarify, you know, from which website um, you can write that into the script where when you select on website, then a field will populate and you can type in um, additional website information. Awesome. Yeah, the sky, one last thing on that, um, Sarah, it's just sure. really, and for everyone, this, the sky is the limit with field interactions. Again, it's not, it's anything that's not out of the box, right? So really your creativity and your mind, it's limitless as far as what you might want um, to do. So with field interactions, but they're really, really cool, uh, only in Novo. So I know this is a Novo only webinar, but there may be a few who just uh, by chance have, you know, <laughs> dialed in that are still on S release. But yeah, get, get on to Novo, get on to Novo, <laughs> the latest and greatest. S is great. I mean, I've been on the system and my business partner since literally 2005. So we've seen a lot of changes, but um, yeah, Novo is the latest and greatest. It's awesome. 
Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and end the questions there because we've got less than five minutes left, but I'm going to hand it back over to Becky and Christine to close out the webinar. For any questions that we didn't have the opportunity to get to, we'll be sure to follow up with those after we wrap up, as well as with the recording of the webinar itself. All right. Thanks again, Sarah. All right, so lastly, um, just a couple of things we want to show you specific to Bullhorn's website and a, another new tool that they have uh, recently launched, which is great. So contacting us, again, we're one of uh, Bullhorn's system integrators, and um, certainly you can talk to your account manager, who we're close with a number of them throughout the nation and even now the world, some. <laughs> um, but you can contact us by phone. There's the information or email us with any question or follow on. Um, as you can imagine, since we've been on Bullhorn a really long time, uh, we love it, clearly. Uh, we partnered with them, and we, you know, have lots and lots to share, and lots we'd like to learn about you, and um, hopefully you about us, and ideas. So we're very passionate about Bullhorn, so, <laughs> and all involved. Um, an additional Bullhorn resource is called um, the New User Packet. So let me pop that open real quick. I had it up here. All right, so this is something that's awesome that you can share with your uh, team and teammates. You can download it, of course, and you could email it to them, but it's just a great item. Um, this, ironically, is Eddie Lee, one of our very favorites. He's in California where we are. Uh, he's in Southern, though. We're more mid-state, but he's um, someone who's grown through the ranks. He started with Bullhorn, and he's done a number of positions, and now he works in sales. So uh, a lot of our great clients come from him. And I know when I was meeting him and I saw this, I'm like, Eddie, that's you, right? So yeah, I think that's very cool that he's on the regular website and here. So anyway, um, the new user packet. It has the table of contents, important resources for you, the Bullhorn Learning Hub with all sorts of videos and articles, and you know, you've seen a number of them, I'm sure, interactive articles or interactive videos, et cetera. Um, lots more Bullhorn content, and then tips from support. So it's, of course, put together, you know, marketing, obviously, and uh, their training department is amazing. So all the items, it looks great. Here's the Learning Hub. It's very interactive. Um, it's telling you, how do I log into the Learning Hub? Notice here, super simple. While well, logged into Bullhorn, select Help to access the Bullhorn community. Choose Training. You know, you're on your way. Um, some things we went over today, talks about end user, here's some of the topics, here's some admin, oh, configuring field mapping, adding custom fields, et cetera. Um, but just fantastic info that's on here. And then all sorts of blogs, um, again, interactive that you can look through. Tips from support, love this. Um, this will be something that they're updating regularly for you, of course. How to update field mapping, you know, how to add, disable, replace users. So just fantastic. So we wanted to make sure and give a shout out uh, for that new product. And then um, lastly, um, just how to contact us on Bullhorn's website. So here's that Eddie again at bullhorn.com. And to get to all the partners, um, which several of you, I'm sure, work with uh, the awesome marketplace partners that Bullhorn has. So you would just go to Partner Marketplace to learn more about us. And then view all partners. Excuse me. And then you can do a control F to find tonic. And here we are. So system integrator focused on the things we're focused on, implementation, customization, customization. Um, so here's just a little bit more about us. And yeah, we do a fair amount of EMPs and configurations, calls like today, where we're talking through, you know, and consulting with you on what's best as we learn about um, and discover things about your company and your workflows and your goals. And then a number of um uh, times we're just doing true consulting. So again, somebody who's maybe been on the system for a few years, uh, but wanting to improve some processes and talk through those pieces. We come with a lot of experience, so we want to help you optimize Bullhorn, of course. And then a fair amount of customization. So the field interactions that we talked about today, the custom objects, and then um, lastly, we help with the number of integrations as well. So if you're working with someone like, let's say, Sense HQ or Checker and trying to get those things live, certainly you have your Bullhorn reps and um, account management to help you. But that's, as a system integrator, what we do too, helping you know bridge that gap and um, make those connections and get you live on the things you need to. Um, so I think that's about it from us, all the ways to contact us. Sarah, I'll let you close it out, other than thank you so much, everyone, for your time today. We know it's very limited, so and we know you're all so busy with lots of competing priorities, so we appreciate it. 
Awesome. Thank you, Becky, Becky, and thank you, Christine. We're going to close out the webinar now. Just a reminder, we'll follow up with any questions that we didn't have time to answer, and we'll go ahead and send out the recording of the webinar as well. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.